e-bikers welcome back to the channel in this video i want to show you how i built the 14 s4p lithium ion battery pack for my e-bike using 18650 samsung 30q cells i bought the cells from banggood but at the time did not notice that they were of the button top variety so once they arrived i had to go through each one removing the button in addition, due to issues with shipping to my country, it took forever for all of them to arrive, I had to place multiple orders at various times, so I did not get them all from the same factory batch, which does require more testing and sorting once you start putting the pack together. Even though they were brand new, I still had to put them through the charger for a few cycles to see what their true capacity is because of not being from the same batch and this is a slow process, especially if you only have one charger. For that very reason, I like to buy my batteries all at the same time, from the same place and brand new because then I can just verify the voltage and check the internal resistance which takes seconds rather than hours and the pack still turns out very well. A few previous battery builds prove that to be true, one of them is made up of 320 cells over one year later and over 6000 kilometers later still performing perfectly and I will cover that in another video later on. But anyway, once I was done with the testing, it was time to figure out what size battery I was going to be building. If I choose to go without cell holders, I can squeeze a 14S5P pack in the box I'd chosen for this project, but since I was short on the number of cells needed for a 5P, the choice was made for me and I went with the 14S4P configuration using cell holders. Due to the whole mess with ordering these, I was actually two cells short for that configuration as well. But since I had some Sony VTC6 cells lying around and they are of the same capacity, I replaced the 14th cell with all Sony cells for the sake of consistency. Next, I put them through the charger for a last quick resistance check and arranged them in their final order on the holders. After that, using my Dremel tool and a grind wheel, I cleaned up what remained of the spot welds from the button tops to make the surfaces smooth for the new welds. Turned out a fine looking bunch in the end. I then prepared the nickel strips for welding and got to work. Since this is a relatively small pack, it didn't take long to get through all the welds. Next, it was time to add the balancing wires, hence why I'd left the nickel strips a bit longer on the sides so I can bend them over the side of the holder and solder the wires there. Note that all of the strips on the battery have the tabs sticking out to the side of it, so all of the balance wiring would be on the same side making it tons easier to do. Would also make for a much cleaner setup. After I tinned the necessary spots I got to soldering the wires and once that was done I painstakingly sorted, arranged and taped them so they'd look pretty, even though this is never going to be seen after this point. Nevertheless, it is always good practice to keep the wiring as clean and as tidy as possible. Next job was to wrap the cells and I also took the chance to put some insulation over the balance cables to give them an extra layer of protection and also this softer material would prevent them from moving in addition to the tape that is holding them down. Wrap the pack in white fiber tape leaving only the ends exposed so I can solder the power cables. On the end nickel pieces I'd left the same small tabs extending over the edge of the holders to make soldering the cables easier and to not have to solder on top of the cells causing heat damage. I stripped the cables at the same spacing as the tabs were and solder them to the tabs quick and easy. This way you're not just drawing power from a single point putting all of the current and stress on it but spreading that same load across four points as much as possible to reduce the losses and heating. Not that the bike is going to be drawing crazy amounts of power but it is always better to make it well the first time around than to have to redo it afterwards. This is not some simple turn signal wiring, this is a fire hazard potential so better do it right the first time. 
After this is done, I sized up the cables, cut them to length and soldered an XT90 connector just to have some excess capacity. Following, I did some more wrapping and insulating of the battery where the power wires are and then I shrink wrapped it to make it look a little better. Next, I got to work on the battery box. Since I've not dealt with something like that before, I decided to take it apart and see what I was working with. The contactor turned out to be just this tiny looking piece of copper, so I added some tin to it to beef it up and hopefully increase its amp throughput a bit. The stock wiring was also very pathetic, so replaced those with beefier cables, also adding an XT90 connector so I can more easily remove the battery for servicing if needed. Was not going to be using the charging cable connector, so didn't really touch that one. Next, it was time to stuff the battery into the case and to make it fit tighter so it wouldn't rattle, I added a few pieces of insulation. This will prevent it from moving and possibly tearing the wrapping and causing issues. Before I closed up the box, I drilled a hole in the top bit for the balance cables to go out of. As you might have noticed, I did not install a BMS in this battery and that was on purpose and with good reason. I have a very good external battery balancer which can balance at 1 amps, moving it from the highest to the lowest cell, thus being a lot more effective than the BMS units you install in the battery usually. I plug it for every charge so there is no chance for the battery to ever go out of balance. And just in case you might wonder about safety and low voltage cutoff, the motor controller from the e-bike I installed actually takes care of that very well by doing a soft cutoff. If you haven't watched that video, you can find the link here or in the video description. Originally, it is a 48 volt system which needs a 13S battery. However, I did hear people complaining that it cuts out a bit too early on a 13S battery, so going to 14S had a few benefits. The cutoff was perfect for that higher voltage because it cut off just over 3 volts per cell, which is what I wanted and would allow me to use more of the battery's capacity, and I had a bit more voltage and slightly higher speed as well. The system is more than capable of operating on that higher voltage, so no worries there. Since I built all of this, I have been out and about. Right now I have over 200 kilometers on it with no issues so far and I hope it will stay that way. Battery is working well and the external balancer is quite convenient because it also has Bluetooth so I can see exactly what is happening with the voltages but the battery ends up perfectly balanced after every charge. A quick disclaimer here. I have been working with batteries and BMS units for a while now and I'd like to think I know a bit about these things, hence why I have the confidence to build a system without the BMS in it, but also having provided other safeguards to keep the battery from going too low. If you are new to all of this, might be a good idea to put in a BMS in the battery, at least for now, so you wouldn't have to worry about that too, because I know getting into all of this at once can be a bit overwhelming. Next step would be to do a few wiring mods in order to try and get some more efficiency out of the system as well as tidying all of this up and moving it in the middle of the frame so make sure you subscribe and click the bell button in order to be notified when that video is released. Won't be too long as there are other interesting things coming as well so need to get this project finished before that. Safe riding and until we meet again.